All right, take your Bibles out and go to Luke 8. Luke 8. So when I was uh, at PBI, I had just gotten married, and my wife and I went down to uh, Miami, Florida. Uh, Brother Jay was down there at the same time, and we got to go preach at this, uh, it was like a Cuban festival, kind of like that, I believe that's what it was. But uh, the gentleman who preached right before me, uh, he, was, he, I, uh, he was a good brother, you know, but uh, he, he, was, uh, he was rough on him, and uh, they were ready to kill him. And all he was doing, the wages of sin is death. You know, people would drive by and he goes, your mustache is going to burn. I mean, he was, he was giving them what for. And I'm not saying that's how you ought to do it, but that's how the Lord led this brother. The problem was, is they're ready to kill him and I was the next preacher. <laughs> so I stepped up and man, you ever had that it, it's so tense that you could, you know, cut the air with a knife, as they say? It was one of those. And so I wasn't sure what to do. And uh, I'm like, okay, Lord, what do I do? And the Lord said, sing. So I, I did. I sang a song. And uh, the song that I sang goes really well with the message uh, here today. And so I'm going I'm to try to sing that song for you. Amen. But here's how the song goes. It goes like this. Heartache and misery were both well known to me. I didn't know the meaning of peace and living free. But one day something happened that changed my whole life. I met a man called Jesus, and now I'm satisfied. I lived oh so wicked, my life was but a shame. I didn't have a thing to show. Not even my good name. But one day something happened. And now I've been set free. From a life of sin and heartache. Since Jesus came to me. And now I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied, yes, I'm satisfied. On my knees on the altar, where to the Lord I cried. Oh, He cleaned up my heart, and He opened my eyes. Ever since I met Jesus, I've been satisfied. Are you satisfied tonight? Man, after I got done singing that song, that whole crowd just calmed down like that. And I preached on being satisfied. And I tell you what, Jesus Christ can satisfy it. Now, the fella in our passage, he's what we call a new dude in a rude mood. Or basically the maniac of Gadara, if you want to be a little more, you know, technical about it. <laughs> but this gentleman here, uh, um, what I'm going to point out here, though, is not necessarily uh, what he went through. I want to notice that there are three prayers that are prayed in this passage. And so I would like to ask this question. Here's the title of my, my message. What happens when Satan, society, and a saint pray? What happens when Satan, society, and a saint pray? And so I'd like to uh, uh, give that to you here today. Now, only one of these is answered the way the prayer is actually, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, oh, oh, one of these is not answered the way the prayer is requested. And it actually happens to be the saint. <laughs> he gets a no uh, to his prayer request, but Satan gets a yes. So society gets a yes, and the saint gets a no. <laughs> kind of strange, kind of strange. Notice in Luke chapter 8, I know you've read it before, and, uh, and so I, I'm going to watch my time because I've got to get us out uh, in a decent amount of time here. So I'm not going to read over the whole passage, but notice uh, uh, the, the prayer request. So I'm going to focus really quick on the prayer request. And the prayer request is found uh, when, uh, in verse 27 where this fellow meets Jesus. And notice it says, and when he went forth uh, to land. So this is Jesus going forth to land. So remember what happened right before this is there was a major storm that happened. And Jesus Christ calmed that storm. And so here's this gentleman who's about ready to have the, cor the storm that's in him calmed. <laughs> and so here he says, uh, this fellow here, he says uh, that met him out of the city, a certain man, 
which had devils long time and wear no clothes. So you'll notice from the text that the, the very first thing that the devil is going to try to do when he gets a hold of you is get your clothes off. The next thing it says, neither abode in any house. So this fellow is homeless. He doesn't stay anywhere. He's not still. He's out of his house. But in the tomb, so he likes dead things. That's the kind of guy this is. So you'll notice that, uh, and you've been taught this and you know this kind of thing, that devil-possessed people have an affinity with dead things. And you'll see in our nation today full of devil-possessed people running around everywhere. They're, they're just going to and fro. I know somebody who went to and fro. As a matter of fact, he told the Lord. He said, Lord, ask him where you've been. He said, I've been going up and down. They've been going to and fro. <laughs> and that's the way the people are. They're just driven. They're driven. You ever notice the Holy Spirit leads? <laughs> The devil drives, and these people are going around all over the place, you know, and the devil's getting their clothes off, and they've got such an affinity with dead things, and they're all about that kind of thing. Now Jesus shows up. And so here's, here's what uh, is said. So notice, uh, when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell before him, uh, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High? I beseech thee, torment me not. Now that's his prayer. Torment me not. And so the Lord doesn't torment him. He doesn't torment him. And, uh, and he ends up, uh, in just a moment, he ends up uh, uh, taking these devils. Instead of tormenting them, he ends up letting them go into a bunch of pigs. He answers the prayer. He answers the prayer. Uh, a little on down, you'll notice that, uh, that society gets there. And society comes out, and they beseech Jesus, and they beseech him to go away. Remember that? They said, get out of here. We don't want you anymore. And guess what? He leaves. He answers the prayer request. So he answers the prayer request of Satan. He answers the prayer request of society. Then the last fella, <laughs> last fella says, Lord, I want to go with you. I want to be with you. I just want you to get me out of here. I'm up on a mountain and I'm at the end of camp. I want you to get me out of here. And the Lord says, no. <laughs> How do you like that? <laughs> so you got Satan and society get a yes to their prayers and the saint gets a no. <laughs> but look, if you're a Bible believer, you know that there's not just yes as the answer to prayer, right? There's other answers to prayer. All right, now, let's go ahead and delve into this here for just a moment. So in verse 28, he asked, uh, the, 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 Satan says, uh, torment me not, I beseech thee, torment me not, there at the end of the verse. How many of you see that? Say amen. amen. Okay, now, what does he mean by torment me not? Now, hold your place here, because I'm going to come back to it, and I'm going to do my best to try to uh, flip through some verses. So if you could keep up, praise the Lord. If not, just write them down. Revelation 20, Revelation 20. Now notice verse 10. Now the word was torment. Torment me not. Torment me not. Now watch the words. Every word of God is pure. Don't let anybody take that King James Bible out of your hand. Don't let them do it. Even if you don't understand why the Lord used that word, just take it that you're dumb and he's smart. And, and just leave it. And even if you never understand until you get home to glory, just trust the Lord. He, it's okay. So notice in verse 10, Revelation 20, 10, and the devil that deceived them, uh, that, uh, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be, what's the word? Tormented, Tormented day and night, forever and ever. So he, does, he says, torment me not. Well, I'm telling you, one day he will be tormented. He will be tormented. He says, torment me not. One day he's going to be tormented. Now, 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 take your Bible and look at Matthew 25. This is important to see. Matthew, uh, I'm not, sorry, not Matthew 25, Matthew 8. Matthew 8. Now, you and I know that uh, the Bible says that the Lord prepared uh, this fire for the devil and his angels, and it's prepared. You weren't meant to go there. That's why Jesus Christ came down here and died on a cross. But how can we escape if we neglect so great salvation? And you know that neither is there salvation in any other. So Jesus Christ, the only way to get saved. Now, in Matthew chapter 8, and notice this is the same uh, uh, um, story and in verse 29 he says and behold they cried out saying what have we to do with thee jesus thou son of god art thou come hither to torment us and then notice the next three words before the time before the time so uh i would say that uh the reason why they got their prayer request answered is because uh he the lord doesn't torment them because it's not the right time it wasn't the time yet it wasn't the time i want to tell you the lord never does uh, the Lord never does the right thing at the wrong time. He always does the right thing at the right time. He always does that. Uh, when I uh, was getting ready to leave uh, PBI and, and head uh, out here to California, I was, the guy, I was the guy that Brother Josh spoke about where I was super excited and I was like, I've got to get out there because everybody's going to flock to me because I'm teaching uh, the, the Word of God. And so everybody's going to want to hear it. Everybody's going to want to hear it. 
No, they don't. <laughs> Well, uh, two days after I graduated, I was, uh, I was in a, a truck and gone, man. I was gone. <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> get, out of, get out of the armpit of the South. But uh, anyway, uh, so, uh, so uh, uh, where was I going with that? <laughs> oh, oh, so I went to Brother Donovan, and I said, I said, Brother Donovan, I was trying to find the will of God for my life. So I went to Brother Donovan, and I asked Brother Donovan, I said, what's the will of God for my life? You know, and I figured, I figured it's going to drop some, you know, Shekinah glory down upon me, and oh, the angels were going to shout like that. And so he looked at me and he gave me this, uh, this uh, advice. He says, brother, he said, I mean this with all uh, uh, reverence. He says, but the Lord moves at the speed of mud. <laughs> I, oh, <laughs> that's quite the revelation. Thank you there, brother. <laughs> the Lord moves in his time. He's never late. He's never early. He's right on time. And he always does the right thing at the right time. Let me give you a quick example of this, and I've got to kind of breeze through this. Let me give you an example of this. Hold your Bible. Uh, 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 take your Bible and go to Luke chapter 4. Luke 4. Now, in Luke chapter 4, Jesus has just fasted. Now, he's been fasting for 40 days. And I think that many times we forget that he wasn't just tempted at the end of that fast. The Bible says he was 40 days tempted of the devil. So he's getting hit. But we only see the three there at the very end. So the very first one that comes up, the very first one that comes up has to do with the immediate need. It has to do with something that you all have heard preached about. It's likened to the flesh, right? So what does our flesh want right now? Our flesh would want to sleep, right? <laughs> I get it. I'm, I'm, I'm right with you. And so now the immediate, the immediate thing that the devil attacks is the devil attacks that he's hungry. And so he says in Luke uh, chapter 4 and verse uh, 3, And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone to be made bread. And Jesus answered him saying it is written that man shall not live by bread alone and if you have an NIV unfortunately you don't have the rest of this but we'll tell you what it says in the original English language it says but by every word of God <laughs> amen so now here he is and he says all right command these stones to be made bread here's the question is Jesus Christ able to make turn stones into bread of course he's able. So the question is, is the Lord able to give bread in the wilderness? And the answer is yes. As a matter of fact, he has given bread in the wilderness numerous times. This particular thing about giving bread in the wilderness is something that has been spoken about over and over and over and over again in your Bible. Uh, one time, the first time Israel ever dealt with this bread in the wilderness, uh, the, 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 Moses tells him, he says, look, the Lord's going to do something to prove you to see whether or not you're going to walk in his ways. And so what he's going to do is he's going to rain down in the morning, rain down this, uh, this bread from heaven he's got to rain down this bread from heaven and then you got to go out and pick it up you got to do this every day except on the sixth day you got to grab enough for two days uh, and, and the reason was because they grabbed every single day. They got to go out every single day and grab it. And if they left over, if they decided to try to leave it over to the next day, you know what happened. It bred worms. And so, but on the sixth day, they had to go out and grab enough because the seventh day, the Lord wasn't going wasn't gonna to put any uh, down on the ground. So they had to go out and make sure they had enough. And you know how people are. People get out there. They get out there the first day and they grab all this manna up and they're storing it up. And they say, man, I got to get as much as we can because we have no idea if there's going to be a enough for tomorrow and so all of a sudden they get up in the morning like whoa what's that smell and they walk over and they look and that 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 bread that they had picked up had bread worms and it stank and, oh my goodness what is this and Moses said you bunch of hard-hearted people the Lord told you he gave you his word and all you had to do was obey his word it's all you had to do was obey his word and so they got the lesson on the first day and the fifth day the second day goes by and the third day fourth day fifth day sixth day on the sixth day goes by a bunch of people go out there and they only pick up enough for that day because they're not about to make that same mistake twice fool me fool me once shame on you fool me twice shame on me right they're not about ready to make the same mistake twice and so they go out on day number seven and they're walking around they're saying hey y'all seen any of that bread anywhere I don't see any bread. And Moses comes out of his tent and he says, you bunch of hard-hearted people, you still don't want to listen to what the Lord told you. They wouldn't believe. They wouldn't listen to him. Look, I'm telling you what, folks, you know what that bread in the wilderness is a great picture of? Every day you getting in that book. You got to get in that book every single day. And I want to tell you, the Lord can not only give you something up here, he can give you something down there too. He can give bread in the wilderness. So they go ahead, and this, this encounter of the bread in the wilderness is a much talked about event. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that men did eat angels' food. Elijah was fed with bread in the wilderness. You guys remember that story? Elijah was fed with bread in the wilderness. Uh, one time, Jesus Christ got there, and he had 5,000 people. 5,000 people. Now, I'll tell you what, our... Our kitchen crew has been absolutely amazing and has fed us every day, and there's been some left over. <laughs> but imagine if all of a sudden we came up here and everybody's hungry, and uh, all they said, well, all we got is five loaves and two fishes. <laughs> <laughs> 
Without Jesus, that ain't going far. <laughs> you know what Jesus was able to do? He was able to feed them in the wilderness. And you know what the Lord's going to do one day in the tribulation? He's going to feed them in the wilderness. But when Jesus was standing there in front, of, in front of the devil, and the devil said, hey, make these stones to be bread, he could have done it. But it wasn't the right time. It wasn't the right time to make bread in the wilderness because that's not why Jesus Christ came. He didn't come to take care of himself. The Bible says Christ came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life and ransom for many. So one day he stands up there and he's talking with, uh, with these Pharisees. And as he begins to talk with them, uh, they begin to talk about this bread that the Lord gave them, their, their fathers when they were in the wilderness. You remember that? And so the Lord takes that bread and he says, listen, he says, I am the bread. I'm the bread. He goes, this is the bread. <laughs> and he talks to him about that bread. They went down and they picked up. And he talks about that and he says, look, I'm the bread. He that believeth in me shall have everlasting life. Amen. You know what Jesus Christ came? He came not to minister but to, I mean, he came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Amen. You know why Jesus Christ didn't turn that, that, those stones into bread? It was the right thing, but it was the wrong time. Because he's going to do it one day. He's going to give bread in the wilderness. But it was the wrong time. And the Lord will never do the right thing at the wrong time. So here's a question. Why then doesn't the Lord cast Satan into hell right now? <laughs> or better yet, why not? Uh, have just cast him into hell as soon as he sinned. Yeah. I'll not do that. Yeah. All right. Uh, how many of you remember the, the, the passage of Scripture over in Isaiah 14? You remember that? You guys have read that numerous times where the devil says, I will, I will. I, he says it five times. How many remember that? Say amen. amen. All right, good. He says, I will, and he's talking about ascending. I'm going to ascend into heaven. I will be like the Most High. And the Lord says, you're going to be brought down to hell. And then you guys have seen that same passage of Scripture over there in Ezekiel 28 where the Lord says five times, I will bring you down. <laughs> Here's what I've noticed about the Lord. The Lord doesn't just cast him into hell right there. The Lord's got a plan. And whenever the Lord does something, he always does it with a flare. <laughs> he always does it with a flare. You know what the Lord does? The Lord giving the devil free reign right now, but one day he's going to take him and he is going to cast him into a place where he will be tormented forever. He will do it. He answers the prayer because it's not the right time and they know this. So you know what the Lord does? The Lord gives them parameters in which, they, which he can operate. Right now the Lord gives the devil parameters in which he can operate. Kind of like when... Uh, when uh, Job was there before, when, well, I'm sorry, when the devil came before the Lord about Job. Remember that? And the Lord said, you can, you can take all he has, but don't touch his body. The Lord gave him parameters, and he took everything. And they said, all right, you can touch his body, but you can't take his life. And he did everything he could within those parameters. So you know what the Lord does? Here's these, these devils, and they said, hey, can we go into those pigs over there? Can we go over those pigs? And the Lord says, all right, go ahead and go into the pigs. Notice what it says in Luke chapter 8. Luke 8. Notice Luke 8 and notice verse 32. And there was there a herd of many swine feeding on the mountain, and they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them, and he suffered them. Then went, in other words, he allowed them to do it. Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. You know what the Lord does? The Lord says, go ahead and do it. And off they go, off they go and enter into those swine and they end up destroying lives. They couldn't destroy the life of this man. So they end up going to these pigs and now they go and they destroy those pigs. Could you imagine what that fellow must have thought after those devils came out of him? I mean, here this guy, all of a sudden he's sitting there. And now he's clothed in his right mind. And he sees those devils that were inside of him. He sees what they do to those pigs over there and how it destroyed them. They ran down there violently. Could you imagine what that was like? These pigs just slamming against each other, ah, snarling, and ah, snorting, you know. And down they go and off the cliff and boom, down to the sea. And there's that guy sitting there and he watches what those devils do to those pigs. And he says to himself, man, that could have been me. But for the grace of God, that could have been me. You know, and I tell you, we, we, we've heard some preaching today. I know Brother Gorski mentioned about church kids. He talked about church kids. 
I'll tell you what, I'm one of those church kids, and i tell you what, I thank God that He held me back. I thank God that He gave me a good mom and a good dad. Because if I didn't have restraints, I would have been that guy. I would have been the guy that I see in El Cajon walking around with scraggly beard and a body that's riddled and, and, and track marks up his arm and all pock faced and he's wild eyed like this and you can't even talk to him. That would have been me. I would have probably killed myself. Why? Because the devil doesn't care about you. He don't care about me. So thank God for his grace. Thank God for his grace. These swine are forbidden under the Old Testament law. You know that. They're forbidden. You know there's another swine that's found in the New Testament. And they're called false teachers. You know what the Bible says about them? They have destruction coming to them. Just like these pigs have destruction coming to them. So stay away from the pigs. <laughs> stay away from them. And I want to say the only answer then for a life that would be destroyed is Jesus Christ. That is the only answer. All right, let's, let's move on. Now notice society's prayer request. Society's prayer request. So look at verse 37. Verse 37. So here's what happens. You guys know that uh, the fellow now is sitting. He's clothed and in his right mind. Now these pigs ran and committed hogicide. And now the guys who were watching the pigs, they run back into the town. And, and, and they're telling everybody what happens. Now the whole country comes out. They all come out to see what happens. And they're looking like this. They see the guy sitting there. And in verse 37, then the whole multitude of the country of the Gadarenes round about besought him to depart from them. See, that's their prayer request. Get out of here. Please get out of here. Why? For they were taken with great fear. And he went up into the ship and returned back again. He answers their prayer. They just asked the greatest person to ever help their community out to leave. Jesus Christ just did in a few minutes what they couldn't do in years. Notice what it says in verse 29. Verse 29, you see that for oftentimes, the middle of the verse, for oftentimes it had caught him and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters? That's society's answer. Lock them up. Put restraints on them. The Bible says over in Mark that no man could tame them. So they'll try to use psychotherapy and try to analyze you and say, tell me about your childhood. Because there's no way that you can be responsible for your actions. You must have been dropped on your head as a little baby. Some of you look like you were dropped on your face. <laughs> no, I'm teasing, I'm teasing, I'm teasing, I'm teasing. Got hit by the ugly stick. No, I'm not. No, no, no. <laughs> so what will they do? Society will tell them it's not your fault. You look at a bunch of people right now who are running around and they're screaming and they think they can, they can change things, that everything is not their fault, it's somebody else's fault. And we, we heard a great message uh, this week about personal responsibility. Taking responsibility. It's your actions, man. Yeah, yeah. You know what the world tries to do? They, they, try to, they try to put all these things on you. They say, well, I'll tell you what, here's a program. And if you use this program, everything will be better. Yeah. They tell you this. They say this. They say, uh, they say, I tell you, all you need to do is you just need to get better habits. And so you just need to have these habits, and you got to find that keystone habit. And if you find that keystone habit, then it fix other habits. Now, all that stuff is really cool. It's really good. And yeah, there's some element in there, and it's good. And, I, and I've used some of that stuff. But I'm telling you what, without Jesus Christ, it amounts to a hill of beans. Yep. And you know what people are trying to do, use nowadays? They're trying to use a bunch of self-help books to try to help themselves. You need Jesus Christ to help you. That's what you need. Now, Jesus Christ does, in just a few minutes, what they couldn't do. And they, instead of admitting and saying, man, you just... You just saved us from this terrorist. I mean, let me, it, all right, all right. Now, I'm a father. I'm a father. There's no way in the world I would ever let this fella babysit my kids. <laughs> no way. No way. As a matter of fact, uh, I've met some of these guys. I got them walking around my church every once in a while. I had one fella, he came up, and, and man, he was, <laughs> I, was, I kept my distance, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and, and man, he was, he was built like a tank, and he was, you could tell he was on something. Uh, one time he started a fire right across the street from our church. Thank the Lord we had a fire department. We, we, we have a fire department right next door to our church, so they just walked over and put it out, you know. Uh, but, well, uh, well, this fella comes up one time, and he just starts cussing at me. <laughs> 
And I'm like, all right, Lord, I'm just pleading the blood, you know, and, you know, and praying. You know what the Lord did? The Lord kept him at a distance. <laughs> Lord kept him out of debt. I thank the Lord for that. Kind of like you guys are there when Brother Ryman yeah. telling us. <laughs> Amen. I realize I'm telling an inside joke. If you didn't hear it, you know, I have to go back and watch the, uh, the, the message. I only have so much time here. Now, uh, now here are these guys. They're upset. They're upset, at the, they're upset at the Lord. They ask him to leave. Now, they're also upset because, uh, because they lost their revenue. They lost their revenue. Uh, so I need you to turn to Mark chapter 5, Mark chapter 5 and verse 16. Now, now, these are Jews keeping pigs. They're not even supposed to be doing that, you know. Not even, but it's amazing. It's amazing how we will justify uh, sin for the sake of revenue. Our entire state has done that. Our entire state has done that. I mean, you look here at this marijuana thing. And look, I don't know how you feel about it. I just think it's wrong. I think you ought to stay away from it. And everybody has all of their reasons why it's okay. I don't think it's right. I don't think you ought to stay. I mean, let me ask you a question. Imagine if all of a sudden I was up here and I'm like, yeah. <sighs> man, I'd just like to tell you something. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't, you would say, whoa, you wouldn't accept that, would you? Yes. Amen. That's right. Oh, you need what I got. You need Jesus. Because Jesus will be the best thing you are. Come on, man. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You got saved out of that stuff. Amen. You want to go back to it? Amen. I had a fellow tell me one time, he said, you'd be much more effective if you went down and had a beer in a bar with a guy and tried to witness to him down there. I said, look, man, I'm trying to tell him how you can get out of that stuff, not how you can get into it. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I'll tell you what, you know this old thing about, uh, uh, one of the things I found about justifying uh, you know, homosexuality and why it's okay, I, I, I've heard this, is that because look at the financial benefit that it brings to our society. And I don't know if you've heard that before, but people will talk about the financial benefit, right? Abraham said, I don't even want one shoe latchet, man, because I ain't going to say you, had Abraham, you, you made Abraham rich. See, that's no reason to justify accepting that sin. That's not a reason. All right, uh, Mark 5 and verse 16. It says, And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. So they heard about the guy possessed with the devil, but they also heard about the swine. <laughs> Uh, could you imagine, because I imagine there's probably some fat cat sitting back there, you know, and he's just kind of running everything and collecting a revenue. And all of a sudden they come and they say, oh, listen, boss, we got a real problem here. And he says, what's the problem? What's the problem? You didn't, you didn't sell a pig for cheaper than it was. Uh, I mean, you, 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 you made sure you got the max amount of uh, cost, right? And he said, well, boss, you're not, you're not going to ask me for a raise, are you? Oh, it's a little bit worse than that. Well, what's going on, you know? And so the, they said, well, boss, we lost all the pigs. We lost all the pigs. What, what happened? Well, there's this fellow named Jesus. <laughs> Who is this Jesus? I want him around here. He'll cost me my dollars. <laughs> and out they go and they say, Jesus, get out of here. Get out of here. Now forget the fact that there's a guy that's sitting here that when he would walk down the street, women would take their children and go, come on, sweetheart, let's go over here. Let's go over here. Oh, oh let's go over here, baby. Okay, everybody in your house, in your house. Go away, go hide, go hide. He's, he's out, he's out, you know. I mean, the kind of guy that at night you hear him and he's out there and he's screaming and he's cutting himself and he's crying out like that. You locked your doors. Jesus Christ just did them a big favor. They didn't want it. Why? They're more concerned about the revenue. You know what happens to people that are more concerned about money? Now listen, you know what happens to people that are more concerned about money? They end up with the same fate as those pigs. Those pigs drowned, right? So I'm telling you what, if all your goal in life is to go after the money, go after the dollar, you're going to drown. Now listen carefully to what I'm saying. Because I don't care if you go down to PBI or if you go and graduate from Dr. Peacock's class or if you go ahead and listen to all of Dr. Kim's messages online. I'm telling you, my friend, the dollar bill is tantalizing and it will get you out of the race. And I have seen young men, and I know young men right now, that graduated from PBI and are now chasing the almighty dollar. Right. It will drown you. It will drown you. Take a lesson from the pigs. It will drown you. And if you don't believe me, go over to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy 6. 
Verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. You gotta be careful. The dollar will drown you. It'll drown you. Their love of money is what causes them to ask Jesus Christ to leave. They didn't realize the anguish that this would bring them. For example, you remember uh, Joseph's brothers? Joseph's brothers wanted to make a quick buck. So what do they do? They sell their brother into slavery. Little did they know how that would haunt them for years and years and years and years and years. Even when they're standing in front of Joseph, they're arguing in their native tongue. And they said, man, I told you, man, I told you we shouldn't have done this. You got to watch out. The anguish it'll bring you. Their love of money causes them to ask Jesus to leave. And he does. You know why? Because he's a perfect gentleman. You see, if you don't want him, he won't barge in. That's why I have a hard time with that irresistible grace thing. Because the Lord says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. What is that? I mean, don't you guys ever like when you read your Bible, don't you try to imagine what you're reading? Okay, all right, there's a door. And here you are inside a door. And Jesus says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's knocking. Why? He's not just going to barge in. He's not. Why? He's polite. He's polite. He says, if any man will hear my voice and open the door. Hey, hey, can I come in? Open the door. <laughs> he says, if any man will hear my voice, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. How is that irresistible grace? Yeah. Boom! Fellowship with me! <laughs> he doesn't do that. Yeah. I mean, he didn't come along to you and say, you will be saved now. <laughs> Here's the Holy Ghost that you cannot resist. <laughs> he doesn't do that. You, some of you, some of you, the first time you're a witness to, you didn't get saved. Yes. And the Lord said, no problem. <laughs> he's a perfect gentleman. By the way, he's also a perfect gentleman like I talk about the fellowship. He's not going to come kicking down your door when you go down the hill tomorrow. He's not going to say, hey, out of bed, Tom, right now, lift you up like Ezekiel. You know? <laughs> Whoop. <laughs> He's not going to do that. He's going to go, hey, you fellowship with me? Sure would enjoy it this morning. I'd like to hear your voice, Christian. You were up there singing and shouting. You have this. Now, you know, I was thinking about that, you know, because sometimes I get to, you know, analyzing things. And, 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 and you know, you, you think about the shouting and you say, and somebody says, oh, there's flesh involved in that, you know. Here we are. Okay, maybe so there was. But look what you made your flesh do. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> You just told your flesh, hey, praise Jesus. <laughs> Amen. You know what the Lord does? He withdraws himself. There's a passage over in the Song of Solomon where, the, where, where uh, the gentleman comes to the door and he knocks on the door. Remember that? And she tarried. And so he withdrew himself. He withdrew himself. In Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 24, it says, Because I have called and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. He's a perfect gentleman. The Lord's a perfect gentleman. You know what the Lord has done right now, and you've been taught uh, very well. In the book of Acts, you find that the Lord keeps dealing with the Jews and dealing with the Jews, but then he slowly begins to turn to the Gentiles until now he has taken that Jew and blindness in part is happening to Israel. And right now the Lord is dealing with, with those Gentiles, but one day he's going to turn back, he's going to deal with them again. You know what the Lord does? He's a perfect gentleman. Why? Because they rejected him. He rejected him. You see, Jesus answers their prayer, asking him to leave because he has never forced himself on anybody. In Revelation 22 and verse 17, it says, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. And like the old preacher said, you know who doesn't get in? The whosoever won'ts. <laughs> all right, now last of all, let's look at the, at the saint, the saint. So now here's this guy. Now uh, uh, put yourself in his shoes. I mean, this guy, he had a rough life. He had a rough life. And, uh, and, and he's, he's sitting here and he's saying, man, I just, I just want to be with you, Jesus. I just, that's all I want to do. I just want to be with you. So he says in verse uh, 38, because uh, now they ask Jesus to leave, so Jesus turns back and leaves. It says, now uh, the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him. So that's his prayer. He besought him. He besought him that he might be with him. Oh, that's a good prayer request. That's a good prayer request. Jesus, I just want to be with you, right? Yeah. 
that's a good prayer request. I mean, weren't we? Uh, <laughs> I got I to gotta be honest with you. Dr. Kim was going last night, right? And he's coming out. He said, and the Lord's sitting here, and he's going, yeah, amen. Yeah, amen. <laughs> Give me that trumpet. <laughs> and I was just kind of hoping. I was just kind of hoping that right about the time we all said amen, all of a sudden the trumpet would sound. <laughs> Because you know that absent from the body is present with the Lord. <laughs> Not some soul sleep somewhere where I'm just, I don't know. No, absent from the body, present with the Lord. <laughs> whether, we, whether we live or sleep, we're going to live with Him. <laughs> and I look forward to that. I look forward to that. And, and don't you just want to be with Jesus? I mean, don't you just want to enjoy the mountaintop for a while? So, I mean, what is it? Is it 67 or 76? 67. What? 67. Don't you just want to sing 67 and over and over and over again? <laughs> It sure is a blessing, but you know what the Lord says? He says, nope. Go back down the mountain. Nope, you can't go with me, maniac of Gadara. You can't go with me. I'm not going to let you go with me. Jesus sent him away. That's what it says in the verse. End of verse 38. Jesus sent him away. I just want to be with you, Lord. Nope, go away. I don't want to be with you. Go, I don't want you to be with me. I want you to go away. I tell you what, uh, if the Lord, uh, could you imagine this? Wouldn't it have been such a blessing if you had gotten saved and then just been raptured up straight to heaven? I mean, all of a sudden, in, uh, uh, Lord Jesus, I'm a wicked, rotten sinner on my way to hell. I, don't, I deserve hell. I don't want to go to hell. Please save me and take me to heaven when I die. In Jesus' name, amen. Bump, da, 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 up, up you go. <laughs> That'll work. It, it would have cut down on a lot of the mistakes that I've made. And unfortunately, I've made a lot of them. I could tell you how not to pastor. <laughs> I feel like that sometimes. I feel like I know, I know all the ways not to do it now. And I'm hoping really soon that I'll start knowing some of the ways that I'm supposed to do it. Because I've made all the mistakes, right? <laughs> if I would gotten saved, if I have gotten saved and, been, and gone straight to heaven right there, it sure would have cut down the times I disappointed Jesus Christ. It would have cut down. Have you, anybody here disappointed the Lord since you've gotten saved? You ever had those times that the Lord says, hey, can you get up and fellowship with me? And you're like, just five more minutes. I've done it. I've done it. Brother Josh preached on it. I, brother, I'm right with you. I've done that. I've done it. Well, I sure wish. And the Lord says, no, you can't come straight up with me right now. You're going to stay down there. But Lord, I'm in this flesh. I know. But Lord, I've got trouble. I know. I got to go that, that, back to that public school. I know. I got to go back to work. I know. I got to go be around people who are not going to be shouting like this. I mean, let's face it. I doubt that there's very few of you that walk into your job, and as soon as you walk into your job, everybody goes, isn't it good to be saved? <laughs> they probably don't do that. <laughs> and some of those folks are probably Christians. <laughs> now, I want to tell you something, though, because, now listen, because the Lord told him, no, you can't come and be with me right now, as much as that's the desire of his heart, the answer to the prayer was no. God got the glory. You see, that's why Jesus answered it that way. Jesus answered it that way because he's going to answer it the way that gives him the most glory. Amen. Notice, if you would, in verse 39, return to thine own house. That's what we're about ready to do. Show how great things God hath done unto thee. Amen. Isn't that a blessing? Amen. Go back and show them how, how great things God had done to you. Now, 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 now that's what Jesus, that was the words of Jesus. And he says, show them, he says, uh, uh, how great things God Right? He says that, right? So then the Holy Spirit takes over and begins to write. And the Holy Spirit says this, And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things God... That's not what it says, is it? Uh, oh, the Holy Spirit's good, isn't he? Oh, yeah. He said how many great things Jesus had done unto him. Woo! Don't touch those words, man. Those are good words right there. You know what maybe the Lord wants you to do? Maybe the Lord just wants to, you to go a little bit longer so you can get more glory out of your life. Because think about it here. Once you die, that's it, man. You, have, you never have another chance to serve the Lord. We, have enough, we, we don't have another chance to make it our own, to make it personal. Because at that moment, I mean, look, we, we, I, I think, well, I'm, 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 preacher, I'm, I'm not trying to lift you up. Please don't take it that way. I know you won't. No, I know you won't. But we all don't have that, that brilliant mind like uh, Dr. Kim a has been given. Lord, Lord's given each of us different things. Maybe you don't know as much scripture. But realize this, one day when you get home to glory, boom, you're going to have the mind of Christ like that. You're going to know things that Dr. Ruckman didn't know. Things that all the church, throughout all the church history didn't know. All the mysteries ain't going to be mysteries anymore. 
and you're going to say, man, you're going to know it all. But right now, you got to search. you got to study. you got to apply yourself. And you know what the Lord does? The Lord looks down there and he says, look, they turned the TV off and there they are and they got one of that heretic commentaries of Ruckman and there they are going through and there they are studying. Look at, there they are and they're reading that passage of scripture and they have no idea all the treasures and gems that are found in it. Watch this, Gabriel, watch this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to all of a sudden tap their brain here real quick and I'm going to open the eyes of their understanding and I'm going to show them something out of my scripture. Watch them come unglued. All of a sudden, the Lord turns a light out of your mind on and you go, oh, I never saw that before. And then you come run into Brother Tom and you say, Brother Tom, have you seen this? And he goes, yeah, I've seen that before, brother. <laughs> you say, shut up. <laughs> now you know what? The Lord has a chance to get glory out of your life, so he's not going to take you home just yet. Now he might, he might, he might, but he said no. He didn't answer the prayer request. Why? So he could get glory, but also he didn't answer the prayer request so that others had an opportunity to hear the gospel. So it says in verse 40, and it came to pass that when Jesus had returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. Whoo! He says, go back and tell them. So this old maniac comes back and he walks up and he walks up to the first door and he knocks on the door. And all of a sudden, he opens the door and he goes, whoa, close the door. <laughs> it's a maniac of the <laughs> And, uh, and he goes, no, it's okay. It's okay. Open the door. I won't hurt you. I just want to come and I want to tell you what Jesus did for me. He says, man, I was out there and I was lost and I was alone and I was without hope and I was without God. And no man cared for my soul. But one day I was out there and the rain was coming down. And it was all getting in my matted beard. And I was wild-eyed and I was looking around like this. And I tell you, I looked out on the water and I saw the strangest sight I ever saw. I saw there was a man and he stepped out onto the brow of the boat. And he took those hands and he set them out like that. And he said, peace, be still. And man, that old waves and wind just laid down like that. And I saw that and I said, oh my goodness, I wonder if he can do that for what's going on inside of me. He said, well, about that time, that man stepped out of the boat and I ran down there and something inside of me says, no, 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 you don't want that. But there was something else inside of me that said, oh yes, I do. I need it. But this thing over here said, no, you don't want that. You don't need that. And you said, man, I need that more than anything else. And about that time, Jesus Christ Christ reached inside of me and pulled out that old wickedness and he changed me. Man, they heard that thing and you can imagine words spread throughout all the town. Next thing you know, Jesus Christ comes back and he looks out on the shore and this time the reception is different. This time they're not like, we don't want you. They're like, oh, is he here? He's in the boat, right? He's in the, oh, there he is. Oh, yes, Jesus, Jesus, we heard about you. Oh, Jesus, we need you. Look, man, the Lord's not going to answer your prayer request to get you out of here right now. You know why? Because there's still somebody out there. There's still somebody out there who's a Gorski. There's still somebody out there who needs to hear about Jesus Christ. Amen. Need to hear it. You know, if I'd been saved and taken up right away, one day I had a, had a, a, a lady in my church. She came and got me. She said, Preacher, she said, I need you to come over to my, uh, help me out. She says, uh, my, my grandson, kind of an adopted grandson, he had tried to stick up for somebody at a party. And he got stabbed. And he's in the ICU. He says, can you, can you come down and can you pray? I said, sure, sis, I'll go with you. We went down to the ICU and there's teenagers all over. And they're crying. And this kid's name was Devin. And I, I walked into the room and they said, they said, the preacher's here. And I didn't know what to do. I didn't know the family. I only knew this lady from my church. I walked in the room and I... I reached over and I grabbed his hand. They say the last thing to go when I, he was in a coma. And they say that the last thing to go in a coma is your hearing. 
And so I, I grabbed this hand and I said, Devin, I said, I don't know if you can hear me. And I began to witness to him. As I'm witnessing to him, there's people around me and all these teenagers just crying and sobbing. I said, Devin, I don't know if you can hear me. I said, but man, if you can, I said, I want to let you know you're a sinner. I said, but Jesus Christ died for sinners and he can hear your thoughts right now. So why don't you just pray with me the best way you know how. Why don't you ask Jesus Christ to save your soul? Why don't you say something like this, Devin? Why don't you say, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. Won't you save me and take me to heaven when I die? I, you say, did Devin hear you? I have no idea. But as I started to pray that prayer, a tear began to roll down his cheek like this. Wow. Amen. A few days later, they ended up pulling the plug on Devin. But you know what I'm hoping for? I'm hoping that one day I get home to glory. And there's Devin. Wouldn't that be a blessing? One day we had a fellow walk into our church and uh, we said he sat in the back and he was kind of concerned about coming into our church. Now some of you have seen our church. <laughs> it's a pretty nice little place and he thought, when he, in his mind he thought he was going to have to ascend some great stairs to go into the church, you know, and we were all going to be standing there saying, holy, 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 or as you guys do, amen, you know. <laughs> Man, that guy ended up telling us how he, he was, he was uh, uh, looking at, uh, at, uh, at, at aliens and following all these conspiracy theories. And then he began to wonder, is there anything else out there? Is there anything else out there? And all of a sudden the Lord led him across this thing about the King James Bible. And he began to read up on it. And he did the best he could with it. And the next thing the Lord led him to our church. This fellow ended up getting down on his knees and getting saved. And almost five years later, that man's leading the singer at our church. Amen. 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 There's a young man. He got caught up in a cult. Worldwide Church of God in Christ, something like that. I, didn't know, I, I forget exactly the name. I had never heard of it. It's a Korean cult. But some guy believes he's the uh, second coming of Jesus Christ. He got caught up in it. And then he got, he, he didn't like it, something about it he didn't like it. And he stayed in that thing for like a year and he got out of it. And he just got away from everything. And then he, he started, he wanted to find the truth. So he stumbled across YouTube. He found some crazy Korean guy. <laughs> and then he said, I wonder if there's anything else like that around here. So we went online and he said, what do you know? There's a church. And he showed up at our church. And after he was at our church that first day, me and Brother Ralph witnessed to that man. And he got down on his knees right there and trusted Jesus Christ as his Savior. The Lord's just not going to answer the prayer and get us out of here. He's still got some glory to get. And there's still some people that need to hear. I'd like to notice also here when Jesus Christ comes back, they're waiting for him. The Lord is also a perfect gentleman because he doesn't hold a grudge. <laughs> Can I explain to you how I would have handled it if I were Jesus? <laughs> oh, now you want me. Oh, I see. You didn't want me the first time. I'd have played hard to get. I would have. I would have said, oh, really? Well, let's, leave. let's do some penance. Let's give some works. Let's go ahead and give some more tithes. Let's pass the plate again. <laughs> Not Jesus. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Conclusion, I'll say this. The Lord answered the prayer of the unclean spirit because it was according to his will and not the right time for their torment. And I apologize, brother. I realize I've gone over time. The Lord answered the prayer of the Gadarene society because he had never, he would never forced himself on anyone who does not want him. And last of all, the Lord did not hear the prayer of the saint because by not answering it, Jesus got the glory and others got a chance to hear the things that God had done for him. We're going we're gonna to close right there. Brother, you come on down. And like I said, I apologize. I went over. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for the opportunity to be able to preach. And... Lord, as we get ready to go our separate ways, I do ask you, Lord, that each one of us would give you all the honor and glory with our lives and give us an opportunity to tell some more people about you. 
until you take us home to glory. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.